Hey folks, Kent Lance Valentine. Welcome back to Teach and Fishing. And tonight we're going to be discussing the last three steps of our eight step system to catching more and bigger fish. We're going to spend a lot of time tonight talking about step number six, which is lure shape. Step number seven, which is lure action. And our last step, which is step number eight, lure color. Before we go on, let's go back and visit and review what the eight steps are. Remember our eight step program was put together to help you catch more fish. It was originally designed as a way for me to have a framework so when I taught seminars, everything that I taught fit into one of these eight steps. As we kind of developed it, uh, we kind of made sure we had them in the right order. So understand that as we look at the eight steps, every step is more important the higher it is on the hierarchy. So step one is location. Step two is to be in the right depth of water, know how deep the fish are. Step three is to get your lure to the right depth. Step four is to get your lure speed right. Step five is your lure size. And then tonight we're going to talk about lure, uh, step number six, lure shape. Step number seven, lure action. And step number eight, lure color. Remember, they are listed in order of importance and give you a way to kind of make decisions on the water to know what you've got right, what you need to work on, and to dial in a pattern every time you're fishing. Remember, these are the last three steps. Shape, action, and lure color are the last three steps in our eight-step process. Now, I want to make it clear that these three steps are extremely important in catching more fish every day you go out, but they're not important until the other five steps are correct. That's why they're at the bottom. These are the final steps, lure shape, lure action, lure color, are the final steps to fine tuning our presentation and our pattern every day so we can get the best lure, shape, action, and color to catch more fish. Remember, they're very important, but they're not important until the other five steps above them are right. Why are these steps last? Remember again, the eight steps is designed to keep what is most important at the top of the list. So understand this, the wrong lure shape, action, and color, the three things we're talking about tonight. You can have the wrong lure shape, action, and color. It will still catch fish if it is in the right location, at the right depth, and ran at the right speed. Most anglers fish backwards. One of the things we fight all the time in our seminars is guys want to worry about changing color or changing action or changing lures before they realize they're really in the right spot, how deep their baits need to be and what speed they need to go. So again, are you fishing backwards? That's the whole idea of this eight step breakdown we've been doing for the last couple weeks here. Um, we want you to understand to fish in a methodical way, keeping what is most important at the top of the list. So when we talk about our eight steps, again, location is number one, being the right part of the lake. Number two, being the right depth of water, know how deep your fish are. Number three, get your lures to a depth that the fish can see them. Number four, get your lure speed right. Number five, get your lure size right. And lastly, what we're gonna focus on tonight, get the lure shape, action, and color right. Ask yourself a very, very important question right now as we wrap up our eight step breakdown sessions. Are you fishing backwards? Are you worrying about lure color before you worry about how deep your lures are. That can be a bugaboo and can really be a problem in becoming a good angler is getting caught up on things that aren't important and not paying attention to the things that are important. Avoid putting too much emphasis on steps before they become important. Just like I just said, fish from the top to the bottom, not from the bottom to the top. Make sure that you're concentrating on what is important. Am I in the right location and right depth of water? Do I know how deep my lure needs to be and how deep actually it actually is? Is my speed right? Is my size right? And then, only then can we focus on what everybody thinks is most important, but it's not. We're going to focus on these three things tonight, but only after these first five things are correct. Okay, before we cut out of here, again, look at this, these eight steps. Ask yourself, are you fishing backwards? Are you making something important before it actually is important? That can stop you from catching a lot of fish. So check out those eight steps one more time. Make sure you're paying attention to the top of the list, then working down. And we're going to be right back after this break to break down lure shape, lure action, and lure color to help you make good decisions on the water every time you're fishing. Warrior Lures, custom designed and painted spoons, blades, and crankbaits for any species of fish. Check out the complete line of Warrior products, including the new Warrior XL Flutter Spoon, online or at your local tackle retailer. Proudly made in Michigan. Trackstack Fishing Systems, manufacturer of high quality mounting track, rod holders, electronics mounts, downriggers, and fishing accessories. Any angler, any species, any boat. 
Tractech Fishing Systems, proudly made in Michigan. Rytech Marine, makers of custom designed transducer mounts and gimbal brackets. Great sonar performance starts with a quality transducer mount, and Rytech has a mounting option for any brand on any boat. Rytech Marine, making life a little easier on the water. Worldwide Marine Insurance. Don't get caught with a loss to find out you have the wrong insurance for your boat and fishing gear. Contact Bob Llewellyn today for a free checkup of your current coverage. Worldwide Marine Insurance. Anglers insuring anglers. Hey anglers, welcome back to Teach and Fish and we're continuing on with our eight step breakdown. Breaking down each of the eight steps in our eight step process to catching more and bigger fish. And tonight we're concentrating on actually the last three steps, step six, lure shape, step seven, lure action, step eight, lure color. So let's take some time to talk about step number six, which is lure shape. And really, when you're thinking about what shape lure to put in the water, there's really only one thing you need to think about, and that is the forage. We've talked about this in just about every step that we've broken down over the last couple months. The bait fish that the game fish are currently feeding on is absolutely key to a lot of the decisions you're going to make picking a lure out of your box to put in the water. So it may be long and skinny like shad uh, or smelt uh, or ciscos. It may be short and fat like gizzard shad. It's important that we have lures in our box that imitate all those different shapes because again, if, if fish are feeding on gizzard shad, we don't want to fish a long skinny bait. It doesn't look right. If fish are feeding on smelt that are maybe six, seven, eight inches long and skinny, we don't want to run a short fat bait in the water because it just doesn't look right. So we have to have a tackle selection that gives us the option to run lots of different shapes. So let's uh, kind of back up on kind of how to know what kind of forage fish or bait fish that the, that's the fish you're, your game fish you're keen on are actually feeding on. And we've talked about this over the last couple uh, breakdowns that we've done, and that's your sonar, right? So your sonar is going to give you a good indicator of what type of bait fish you're dealing with. You can go to your local DNR site and you can find what kind of bait fish live in your lake. A lot of those netting surveys are available. You can find those and it'll tell you what kind of bait fish are available in the body of water you're fishing. That's absolutely important knowledge for you to know. But getting on the water and seeing what's going on in your sonar is really going to indicate what type of bait fish the fish are currently feeding on. So it could be shad uh, ball up close to the surface. It could be shiners in the middle of the water column or it could be perch and gobies uh, with fish on the bottom feeding on bottom oriented bait fish, maybe even crayfish. So our sonar is gonna be that last little um, hint of what the fish are feeding on. We need some good basic resources to let us know what's in our body of water. Sonar is going to be that last indicator of what there is and that's where we start to go because now the easiest step to get right is step number six, lure shape, because all you have to do is pay attention to what kind of bait fish the game fish you're targeting are feeding on and pick a lure with the same basic profile. Not that hard. It's actually a very, very simple, simple step and a very quick step. That's why we've included in this little, uh, the, this breakdown of three different steps, because these are all fairly simple steps. There's not a lot involved. All you have to do with lure shape, once you get the lure size right, which is step number five, boom, pick a lure shape that looks like the bait fish that you're dealing with. Crankbaits, spinners, spinner blades, spoons, you have to stock them in different sizes and shapes to maximize your catch each day. So let me make it very simple. Uh, as we look at crankbait shapes, there's lots of different crankbait shapes. There's very, very short and very, very fat. There's in between, we call shad baits. There's long skinny baits, what we call minnow baits, but there's variations inside those. So there's long skinny baits that are, that are basically flat. There's long skinny baits that have a curve. There's shad baits that are basically flat. There's shad baits that have a curve. Each one of those shapes is a little bit different. We'll talk about action uh, after the next break here, but it's important to have a lot of these different shapes in your box. Too many anglers buy one, two, maybe three different styles of lures because they're their favorite. They only buy one or two, three different lures and they buy lots of different colors. Uh, we're gonna talk about color tonight too, so pay attention to that. When you're better off to pick two or three color variations that work where you fish and buy a lot of different sizes and shapes, you're better off to have 20 different sizes and shapes in four colors than you're to have four sizes and shapes, each one in 20 colors. Um, if I could teach you anything tonight, understand that. Your tackle selection needs to be wide before it gets deep. That's an important part of this. So we're looking at crankbaits, lots of different shapes, 
Uh, each one of these is going to have a different action. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But make sure you've got a wide range of shapes in your crankbait box. Spoons are the same way. You may want some very, very narrow spoons. You may want some spoons with a bigger rear end. You may want some casting style spoons, a little bit thicker that have a much more round shape. They're a little shorter, a little fatter, have a round shape and a bigger rear end. Um, each one of those, we're going to talk again in a second here about action, but each one of those are things you want to have in your box. Maybe you want some spoons that are actually shaped like the bait fish that you are dealing with, especially if you're dealing with jigging spoons, spoons that you're not casting or trolling, but spoons that you're jigging for deep water or structure fishing for largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, walleye fishing, crappies and bluegills. Uh, jigging spoons are a big part of this and they have to be shaped properly. So make sure you have a lot of different shapes in your spoon box. Same thing with spinner blades. Colorado's, uh, Indiana's, uh, willow leaf blades, some specialties like these bad mows, Dakota blades, hatchet blades. Make sure you have a lot of these different types of things in your box. Again, better to have a lot of different shapes in a couple different colors than a couple different shapes in a lot of colors. Again, that's the, if I can get anything through to you tonight, guys, that's what I want to do. Stop worrying about color, especially in the big spectrum of all these custom colors. Buy a couple of colors that work everywhere you go, buy a lot of different sizes and shapes of baits, and then start adding colors that work beyond that, okay? But concentrate on lure shape. Now here's why this is important. Let me give you the best analogy I've come up with doing seminars. I've been doing this, this trying to teach this lure shape thing for about 25 years now. Let me give you the best analogy I've come up with. It's summertime. We're gonna have a cookout at my house. I'm gonna invite you over. And I'm gonna tell you, hey, I'm serving two things. I'm serving hot dogs and I'm serving filet mignon. And you walk up to the, the, the serving table and you see this and you see that. And you want filet. What are you going to grab? Are you going to grab the six inch long round tube shape or are you going to grab the, the six inch round, uh, looks like a hockey puck. Which one are you going to grab if you want a filet? You're going to grab that round shape that looks like a filet. Now, what you don't know is I went to the butcher and said, hey, do this. Here's 10 pounds of filet. I want you to chop it all up, put it in a casing and make it look like a hot dog. And I want you to take all those hot dogs, chop them up and form them into six ounce little patties. So basically you're getting hot dog meat here and filet meat here, but your mind says, I want a filet. It should look like that. That's what fish do. So if they're eating on bait fish that look like a filet and you try to give them a lure the shape of a hot dog, it's not going to work. Pay attention to your lure shape. After you get the size right, the next step is lure shape. It's extremely important. I'm going to tell you, guys start to miss it because they jump right from lure speed to lure color and they skip lure size, lure shape, and lure action. Pay attention to step number six, lure shape. Get the right shape based on the bait fish that the game fish you're chasing or feeding. You're going to catch a lot more fish every time you're out on the water. All right, let's take a quick little break and we'll be back to talk about lure action, another very, very important factor that's often overlooked by anglers. Warrior Lures, custom designed and painted spoons, blades, and crankbaits for any species of fish. Check out the complete line of Warrior products, including the new Warrior XL Flutter Spoon, online or at your local tackle retailer. Proudly made in Michigan. Trackstack Fishing Systems, manufacturer of high quality mounting track, rod holders, electronics mounts, downriggers, and fishing accessories. Any angler, any species, any boat. Trackstack Fishing Systems, proudly made in Michigan. Rytec Marine, makers of custom designed transducer mounts and gimbal brackets. Great sonar performance starts with a quality transducer mount and Rytec has a mounting option for any brand on any boat. Rytec Marine, making life a little easier on the water. Worldwide Marine Insurance, don't get caught with a loss to find out you have the wrong insurance for your boat and fishing gear. Contact Bob Llewellyn today for a free checkup of your current coverage. Worldwide Marine Insurance, anglers insuring anglers. Fishhawk Electronics, providing lure speed and water temperature at any depth. Featuring hardwired models X4 and X4D and the new portable X2, anglers can have the Fishhawk advantage anywhere they fish. Trolling without a Fishhawk is simply called boating. Max Lure, the original since 1969. Catch more fish with the Wedding Ring Spinner, Smile Blade, Double D Dodger, Flashlight Attractor, and more. Max Lures, a legacy of innovation for 50 years. Macklin Heating and Cooling. 
experts in the installation, maintenance, and service of home comfort systems. Family owned and operated in mid-Michigan for 50 years, Macklin Heating and Cooling, where your comfort matters to us. Procure Bait Sense, manufacture of high quality bait scents, cures, and dyes. Made with whole fresh bait, Procure Sense perfectly mimic what fish eat every day. Procure, helping anglers worldwide catch more big fish. Okay, now that we've got the right shape lure, let's start talking about how that shape is going to affect the action. So, we're gonna talk about lure action. There's really two things to think about. Obviously, forage is, is number one and most important. Uh, time of year becomes a little bit different too because fish will swim a little bit different through the water. But if we know what kind of forage we're faced with, and we're back to this picture, if we know what kind of forage we're faced with, we're going to be able to pick the right lure action. Usually the longer and skinnier a lure is, the less wobble it has, the easier it moves through the water with less effort. The shorter and fatter the bait is, the faster it goes and the more action it has and it moves through the water. It's a very, very simple guideline, but works pretty darn good. Okay, remember this about lure action. Game fish, just like that, that, that shape we showed you, that analogy we used with the hot dog and the filet, lure action is, is just as important. Game fish are expecting the bait fish they're feeding on to move a certain way. They don't expect the shiner to swim in a real erratic action like a shad does. And they don't expect the shad to just kind of mosey along like a smelt does. Uh, game fish are expecting bait fish to move a certain way, especially when those game fish are feeding and chasing that bait. Match the action of your bait to what the fish are feeding on. Uh, using a lure with a little bit more action, and what a fish expects can be a trigger, especially for active fish. So if you're catching fish, it's going to be a tough bite. The fish are just kind of there. You're seeing lots of big arches on your screen, which means the fish aren't moving. Pick a lure that imitates the action of the bait that they're chasing. If the fish start getting hot, you can actually add a, a bait that actually has a little more action and maybe even trigger some of those fish, especially when they get really, really active. All right, let's talk about crankbaits, lure action for crankbaits. There's two things that really determine... Uh, how the action of a crankbait is going to look in the water. The first one is the bill shape. Longer, wider bills create lures with a wider tail action and a slower wobble. Short, narrow bills create a tighter tail action and a faster wobble. So baits that have a long bill and have the line tie on the bill and the further down the bill it is, the more it gets, the rear end is going to move in a wide arc, which means the bait's going to move wide, but it's going to kind of look like it's wobbling slow because we've got this long arc on the rear end, okay? A bill, a long wide bill is going to do that and the further the line tie is away from the nose, the more the bait's gonna have that wide action where it looks like the body is moving slow but we're getting a wide arc. Conversely, short, narrow, traditionally shallow diving bills usually have the line tie on the nose of the bait. The tail moves really, really fast which makes the bait kind of look like it's moving really fast. It's not making a wide arc, it's Right? It's not making a wide arc, but it is moving through the water in a tight arc and kind of moving in a straight line. Those little tight wobbles are what we call a tight action. That wide wobble obviously is what we call a wide action. That is controlled by the bill shape. Dive angle also has a lot to do with it. You can take the same lure, so I'm, I'm thinking right now uh, of an 800 series reef runner and a deep husky jerk from Rapala. Same basic lure size, same basic lure shape. A reef runner has a very uh, aggressive angle, nose down, it, it dies with the nose down, which gives it again that aggressive uh, action, the wider tail action, a little bit more aggressive action, whereas a deep husky jerk is a flat runner, kind of runs flat in the water, very little nose down attitude, and it has a more of a Rapala action, more of a tighter wiggle and less movement in the tail. So line tie position creates dive angle and bill shape, those three things really determine the action of your crankbait. So pay attention to those. You want a lot of baits with long bills, you want a lot of baits with short bills, okay? Here's a great example for this. And this is where anglers get in trouble. Remember, always pick a lure based on the action that you want to achieve, not the depth it needs to get to. This is critical. Sometimes a shallow lure gotten deep will catch more fish than a lure designed to go deep. And the opposite is also true. Sometimes a deep running lure ran on a short lead to, to go shallow may catch more shallow fish than a lure that's designed to be a shallow diver. So here's a great example. 
This is a Reef Runner 800 series and a Reef Runner 700 series. They are the exact same size and exact same shape. The body, the molded body is exactly the same for both lures. Same size, same shape. What changes is the action. So the 800 series has a big bill with a line tie, so it has a very, very slow, wide arc on the tail. The 700 has the line tie on the nose and a short, narrow bill. It has a very, very tight wiggle. If you want to get down 20, let's say, let's say you got to get your lure down 20 feet, everybody grabs this deep diver. This deep diver will get down to about 32 feet on, on flat line. This will only get down about 8 feet. So you got to get a lure 20 feet. What's your first thought? Let's go with the deep diving lure. That may not be the best option. That may not be the right action. You may want this action. So now all we have to do is take a shallow diving bait with a shallow diving or a tight action, put it behind a jet diver, put it behind a tadpole, put it behind an inline weight, put it behind a snap weight, put it behind a lead core, and get it down to 20 feet and catch a lot more fish than getting a traditional deep diving lure with the wrong action to the right depth. Conversely, we may only want to get five or six feet deep for fish that are feeding on the surface. We instantly grab this shallow diving bait. Well, we may catch more fish with a deep diving bait only ran 10, 15, 20 feet behind our offshore uh, inline board because of the action is different. So same size lure, same shape lure, completely different actions. Pick a lure based on action, not how deep it gets. We can take a deep bait and run it shallow. We can take a shallow bait and get it deep. Ideally, if you're fishing deep, the fish want that kind of action. That's not always true. So be aware that getting your lure to the right depth obviously is step number three, way up there at the top, but getting the right action is also part of that depth control piece. So um, don't just grab a deep diving bait to get deep because you may have the wrong action. That's an important part of this whole thing and probably the biggest thing I wanna emphasize here uh, in this section on step number seven, lure action. All right. Let's talk a little bit about spoons. Uh, you should carry a couple different spoons in your, in your box. Uh, walleye spoons are usually um, the same width from uh, nose to tail. Uh, let me show you one of these right here. So this is, this is, this is a walleye spoon uh, right here, same width, nose to tail. Uh, and it has a very quick snappy action. It's not designed to roll, it's designed to snap back and forth. It has a very aggressive action. Salmon spoons, on the other hand, have a narrow nose and a wide rear end. That spoon is actually designed to roll. It's got a little figure eight action in it. It's a completely different action. So you can have the same size lure by changing the shape, you completely change the same action. You're pushing a spoon at the same speed, but you can completely change the action based on the shape. So that's where the action and shape kind of work together. Um, I can also fish jigging spoons. So if I'm, if I'm fishing jigging spoons, Maybe I'm fishing structure for smallmouth bass or largemouth bass or walleyes uh, or panfish. Or maybe I'm ice fishing. Remember that short, fat spoons fall very quick. So you lift a, fat, a short, fat spoon up, it falls back very quick with a very, very snappy action. The longer and skinnier the spoon is, the longer it takes to fall and the wider arc it has as it falls. So we can completely control our lure action based on the size and the shape of the lure. So see how that all works? So we start at step number five is size, step number six is shape, and those things come together to create step number seven, which is actually the action. Spinner blades, the same type of thing. Colorado blades are, are uh, short and fat blades, they're short and wide. Uh, they create a very, very wide, slow action. They create a lot of vibration, thump, 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 a lot of vibration with very, very little flash. On the other end of the spectrum is the long, skinny willow leaf blade. Its action is very, very tight. It spins around uh, the, the uh, line very, very, very fast. It creates a lot of flash, very little vibration, and a completely different action. So if you've got a spinner, a crawler harness, that's let's say six feet long or five feet long, and you've got a Colorado blade spinning nice and slow, thump, 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 you actually create a little S curve in your harness because that bait that's, that, that spinner takes a lot of time to go around, so it's thump, thump. You actually get a little bit of S turn in your harness. You take a willow lift blade that's turning really, really, really tight, real close to that line, and that crawler harness goes through the water almost completely straight. Completely different actions just by changing the blades. Indiana blades are kind of in between and kind of give you 
average flash, average vibration, and very little, but a little very subtle movement on your bait. So Colorado blades, a little bit more action on your bait, more thump, less, less flash. Willow leaf, more flash, less thump, and less movement on your harness. Indiana blades are kind of in between. So again, make sure that you stock your tackle box with Colorado, Willow leaf, Indiana, and then you add in a hatchet blade or you add in a Dakota blade, blades that are a little bit different, specialty blades, I would call them, uh, that create little different actions. And now you've got a pretty good selection of spinner blades to carry, okay? All right, let's take our last break here. Let's come back and talk about something that every angler thinks is really, really important. And I'm gonna tell you in the big scheme of things, it's really not, uh, and that's lure color. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back to wrap up today's uh, eight step breakdown. We're gonna talk about lure color. Fishhawk Electronics, providing lure speed and water temperature at any depth. Featuring hardwired models, X4 and X4D, and the new portable X2, anglers can have the fishhawk advantage anywhere they fish. Trolling without a fishhawk is simply called boating. Max Lure, the original since 1969. Catch more fish with the wedding ring spinner, smile blade, double D dodger, flashlight attractor, and more. Max Lures, a legacy of innovation for 50 years. Macklin Heating and Cooling, experts in the installation, maintenance, and service of home comfort systems. Family owned and operated in mid-Michigan for 50 years, Macklin Heating and Cooling, where your comfort matters to us. Procure Bait Sense, manufacturer of high quality bait scents, cures, and dyes. Made with whole fresh bait, Procure Sense perfectly mimic what fish eat every day. Procure, helping anglers worldwide catch more big fish. Okay, we are finally at the end of our eight step process and we are finally at lure color. And you know, it's funny, I've been doing this for a long time and it's funny how important most anglers think lure color is. We put it number eight on our eight steps. It's the last factor, it's the least important factor. Now, saying that, I want you to understand that color is important and can be the last factor and can make a big difference in how many fish you catch every day, but it's not important until everything else is right. The wrong color lure at the right place, at the right speed, in the right size and action will catch fish, even if it's the wrong color. The right color lure in the wrong size or the wrong shape or the wrong speed or the wrong depth or the wrong place, even though the color is perfect, won't catch anything. So color is very, very important, but it's not important until, until all the other seven steps are right. Then you can start focusing on color. Give the fish something they can see. We're gonna talk about this in just a second. While there are some basic guidelines, uh, this can be a huge factor in how many fish you catch every day, but remember color is not important until all the other steps are right, okay? Never said, I've never said color is not important. I have said for 25 years, color is not important until all the other steps are right. So again, here's our eight steps, right? Be in the right part of the lake, be in the right depth of water, know how deep the fish are. That leads you to where your lure needs to be. Then we get lure speed, lure size, lure shape, lure action. And lastly, now we can start to focus in on that last little piece that last little bit that's gonna put us over the top and get us the most fish every day, and that is getting the right lure color. Here's some basics uh, for lure color selection. Pick a basic finish to imitate uh, the bait in your area, right? Remember, shiners are very, very shiny. So chrome lures, uh, gold-plated lures, things that shine, uh, but shad, if you take a shad out of the water, it has a little flash, but it's much duller in real life. So maybe grays or bone colored bases. So understand the kind of bait fish that your fish are feeding on and pick a lure base that kind of matches that. Traditionally, the closer you get to the bottom where bait fish live, gobies, suckers, um, uh, uh, perch are usually dull as you move up in the water column, right? So now you get shad and elwives in the middle of the water column, right? Cisco's, they're a little duller. 
Not as dull as the ones on the bottom, they're a little bit brighter, but then you move up to the top of the water column where you get shiners and those types of bait fish, they're very, very bright. So the closer to the bottom a bait fish lives most of its life, the duller it's going to be. And that's because, I'm gonna show you why in the next slide. Okay, in open water, this is important guys, in open water, pay attention to the color on the bottom of your lure. Fish generally feed up and they're only seeing the bottom of your lure when you are in open water. I don't care if you're jerk bait fishing for bass. I don't care if you're top water fishing for bass. I don't care if you are trolling open water for walleye like we do a lot. Pay attention to the color on the bottom. I will tell you this, uh, our records tell us that there are some really important colors you need to pay attention to. I'm going to show you that next slide. When you're jig fishing, or if you're targeting fish feeding on bottom-oriented uh, bait fish, crayfish, gobies, bait that lives on the bottom, pay attention to the color of the top of your lure. Because traditionally, those fish will get on top of the bottom, they'll look down, and they will see the top of uh, the goby or the top of the crayfish. Pay attention to that. Because we all know that crayfish have different shades, right? There's reds and there's oranges, there's greens. Uh, I learned some really cool things from my good friend Michael Ray about color on crayfish that maybe we'll get him to share with us one day. But that's a really cool part of that, right? So if you're in open water or on surface, pay attention to the bottom of your lure. If you're fishing right on the bottom or right close to the bottom and the fish are coming from the top to pin those baits to the bottom or suck them off the bottom, pay attention to the color on the top of your lure. Very, very important. Okay, here is some really cool things I want to share with you about lure color. Number one, we talked about shiny, we talked about dull, right? Avoid natural colored lures, especially in cover. I can't tell you how many guys I see, they show me their tackle box, look at it, it looks just like a perch, looks just like a bluegill, looks just like a walleye. Well, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Bait fish are colored the way they're colored for one purpose, that is to do what? Hide from predators. Why do you want a fishing lure that disappears? So avoid using natural colored lures, especially if you are in cover. Now, there are some really, really bright sunlight conditions, bright water, very, very clear water, very, very highly pressured water. Occasionally, natural colored baits may be the best choice. I'm gonna tell you most times they're not. Make your lure stand out. Make your lure visible. Make it look a little bit different than what the fish are actually seeing in real life. I'm a pretty detailed record keeper, as are most of the guys in our teaching fishing group. Our records indicate that there are four colors that no matter where you fish for walleye, no matter if you're jig fishing, open water fishing, it doesn't matter. There are four colors that excel in catching walleye, specifically in open water. They are purple, red, orange, and pink. Remember them as prop, P-R-O-P, purple, red, orange, pink. If you're fishing in open water, be sure that the bottom of your lure has one of those colors on the bottom. It can be just a little red throat. It can be a pink stripe. It can be a little spot of orange on the back hook. I don't care. Purple, red, orange, or pink, flat out with all the records we keep and all the detailed records we've kept over the last 30 years, they definitely catch more fish most days. And something else we found out by keeping good records, dots and stripes on your lure increase the performance of crankbaits, especially in cold water. Something about the dot, something about the stripes close to the bottom. Again, they can't be on the top because they're useless. But dots and stripes on the side or close to the bottom definitely make a difference and will help you catch more fish in cold water. Just something that the numbers tell us, okay? Again, when we talk about spoons, we're gonna talk about some of the same things. Avoid natural colored lures, especially if you're gonna fish close to cover. Those same four colors. I'm gonna come back to that prop and everything we talk about. I don't put a lure in the water in walleye waters unless it has purple, red, orange, or pink on it somewhere. Spinner blade, spoon, crankbait, jig. Um, the only thing I do fish that doesn't have one of those colors on it are my plastic bodies. I have a tendency to have those be dark and more natural. My jig head always has usually orange or pink uh, or purple on it. Crankbaits, purple, red, orange, pink. Spinner blades, every, every color of spinner blade and spoon that we've designed for Mike at Warrior, our Lance Valentine Signature Series colors, every single one has purple, red, orange, or pink on it somewhere. I truly believe it makes a big difference, okay? But when you're thinking about spoons, think about finish first, color second. So we're talking about finish, we're talking about gold, silver, copper, maybe antifreeze, or maybe pink antifreeze. 
uh, maybe even a chartreuse back lure. Think about finish first. We're talking about spinner blades or spoons here. We're going to talk about spinner blades in just a second. Anytime we're talking about non crankbaits, spinner blades or spoons, think about finish first gold, silver, copper, antifreeze, pink antifreeze, chartreuse backs. Think about that first and then color second. Getting the right finish and the wrong color will catch you more fish than getting the right color in the wrong finish will. So pay attention to that when you're fishing with metal lures. Okay, let's go on to spinner blades. Here is a really cool, again, we talked about blade finish, gold, silver, copper is usually more important than the color. It is, I'm gonna give you a really cool little tidbit here if you're a spinner fisherman. Again, our records indicate purple, red, orange, or pink. Uh, that's without question. But here is something really cool. If you like to fish crawler harnesses for walleye, Pay attention to this. I learned this from my good friend, Steve Bone, one of the best spinner fishermen I know. Uh, he grew up on Saginaw Bay back in the, the, the 80s and 90s when spinner fishing was all we did. And I got a chance to, to get to know him very well as a friend, fish with him uh, one year on the Michigan Walleye Tour. I learned a lot from him about crawler harness fishing. Here's a little tidbit he shared with me. If you're catching fish, crawler harness fishing, if you're catching fish on the back hook, Pay attention to the finish on the back of your blade. That's what's important. Those fish are coming from the back. They're seeing the finish. If it's gold, copper, silver, whatever it is, pay attention to that and make sure all your other harnesses have that finish. If you're catching fish on the front hook, the fish are coming from the side of the front. They're seeing the color on the front. So pay attention to the color on the front. Great little tidbit if you're a spinner fisherman. Fish on the back hook, pay attention to the finish on the back of the blade. If you're catching fish on the front hook, pay attention to the color on the front. Important tip for my good friend Steve Bone, gonna help you catch more fish every time you're out pulling crawler harnesses for walleye. Okay, let's wrap up this whole thing. We've been talking about this for, oh, I don't know, six, seven, eight months now, uh, our eight steps. And again, our eight steps are the way that we disseminate information. Everything we teach fishes in one of these steps. Now, when you're on the water, your job is to put together these eight steps. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you're in the right location first, then make sure you're in the right depth of water, find your fish, see how deep they are, know how deep you want to put your lures, control that depth, then play with your lure speed, lure size, lure shape, lure action, lure color. So you should always be thinking in the eight steps. If you're not quite sure how the whole eight steps thing kind of works, uh, not only do we have these breakdowns, but we also have a seminar and a DVD uh, that actually covers this uh, in detail. But go back and check out our eight step breakdown. You can find them on our website at teachandfishing.com. Speaking of teachandfishing.com, if you're looking for information, resources on planning a trip, water temperature, water clarity, water color, weather, um, resources to help you catch more fish, our Teach and Fish and TV channels, uh, seminars like this, the ability to get into the eight steps and actually go back and watch any of the eight steps that we've shown. Check out teachandfishing.com. There's a lot of stuff that's free on our homepage. Everything is linked through our homepage. Feel free to watch our TV channels that are there. Feel free to go through the, um, uh, the sections on resources. There's our library there with, with articles. There's an eight step section there. Lots of things to plan a trip, catch more fish, lots of seminars, lots of articles, lots of little tips and tricks, lots of stuff there on our website uh, that you can check out. If you wanna go a little bit deeper and get more detailed information every month, check out our subscription service. So as you scroll down behind below the TV, you'll see this subscription service box. Above it is the title that says subscription service. Click on that title and it'll take you to our subscription service page. It'll tell you everything that's going on on our subscription service and how you can become part of what we think is the best way to get some of the highest quality cutting edge fishing knowledge every month here at Teach and Fishing. So uh, spend some time teachandfishing.com and remember uh, our Facebook page is Teach and Fishing. Be sure to check that out. We do some live stuff a couple times a, a month. Uh, every Monday morning we have our coffee hour, which is a informal chat on our Facebook page. Be sure to check that out. Lots of things at teachandfishing.com to help you catch more fish every time you're on the water. All right, if you need to get a hold of us, again, teachandfishing.com is our website. Facebook at Teach and Fishing. And if you need to contact us or have a question or just want to reach out and say hi, teachandfishing at gmail.com is our email address. All right, Angus, thank you for your time tonight. I appreciate it. I've really enjoyed breaking down our eight steps and explaining to you why our eight steps is the way that we teach and why we think it's going to help you catch more fish every time you're on the water. Remember, 
Remember those eight steps and ask yourself every day, am I fishing backwards? Make sure you're paying attention to what's important before paying attention to what's not important until. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time. Have a great fishing season, and be sure to check us out at teachandfishing.com.